Hey guys, this is Hell Hades free to play. Guys, we're jumping back on the free to play account. I'm going to take you on a ride. This is going to be a video where we talk about how to push into the mid game dungeons, and I'm going to do it on the free to play account. So, like, you get yourself to about 90 odd days in, you're starting to get some champions that are worth leveling, and maybe you've already leveled some to 60. That was always the first priority get some level 60 champions. You might then have gone and got their masteries. That's the second priority for your champions. Get their masteries so they can do their jobs really well. And then we come to this sticky point of, do I now need to start to farm some gear? Has the gear that I've been given along the way kind of used its sell by date? And how do I get some nice, shiny new stuff? That's where we get to mid game dungeons. It's a really important part of the game. And we're going to try and push through it right now. Right, so we're just coming off the back of the Gaius Fusion, which means that I pretty much wiped out a ton of my resources getting this fusion. But I also moved my account on a lot in that time period. I had to for, th for stuff like champion training events. Which means that I'm a lot stronger today than I was two weeks ago before the fusion. That's really important to kind of take that into account. More 60s because of the training events means stronger now than before. Okay. Also, this has popped up. Twitter rush has been completed. Ray keep getting this stuff wrong. They're saying it's completed, and yes, you get two shards and the tome and the uh, rank five chicken. What they keep forgetting to add in is Hell Hades is doing his own Twitter rush. We've got this post going on right here at Hell Hades TV is my Twitter. I hit 10,000 followers yesterday. Thank you so much to everyone who came and followed me on Twitter. If we get to 15,000, I double the reward I'm going to give away. If we get to 20, I triple the reward. You're welcome. So, what's going on here? We hit 10,000 followers. It means I'm going to give away 4,200 gems. You're like, why that number? Because it is the number you get in the gem pack. I'm going to buy you the gem pack. Game, yes, yes, yes. Hold on a second. I know. Thank you, Raid. Thank you for the gifts. Uh, I'm going to buy one winner as it stands. This big pile of gems, 89.99. So, I'll buy someone a pack. If we get to 15,000, I'm buying two people a pack. If we get to 20,000, it is three people a pack and it's all based on liking my twitter sharing or retweeting this post and commenting on this post which i will link down below come and get involved guys free stuff community gift thank you very much community gift thank you very much community gift thank you very much well done community for uh, getting behind the free stuff initiative again like all of this can just sit in your inbox if you want it to there's no real reason to hold any of this stuff in the inbox though, other than like energy or XP. So XP boosters, I'll leave in there until the next kind of fusion and stuff. Same with the energy packs. The rest of it will just go into the account. And actually it becomes you know, a good top up to my shard count and stuff, which was lagging behind. It starts to become you know, a good top up to books and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a reasonable spot for resources of that type. But really, it's gems which are in a, a dire spot right now. Let's have a quick look through the kind of champion pool that I've got to use for this mid-game dungeon push. So anyone who's a 60 is basically going to be considered for, for teams. Anyone who's a 50 that I've geared is also going to be considered for teams. Really, anyone that's 40 or below, when you start to push into the mid-game, the stats are just not quite there yet to help you. So... It, they're, they're really not in contention to be starting to push through. So that's kind of where you need to think to yourself. That's why we need so many people level to 60 and, and, and at least 50. So I've got a seer currently, and it might be that through this video, we start to change up builds. It might be that I need to improve builds, but my seer build is not terrible. Decent amount of crit rate. I want it to be 100. Enough accuracy to rip buffs off of enemies now, right through the mid game. Decent amount of health. Good amount of speed. So Seer's built okay. My Armina does not have life steal gear. That's actually an important thing to realize because she could go down and won't heal herself back to full. But again, good speed. She's my decreased defense champion. I need her to be quick. She needs to be quicker than the other people that are going to lay the damage down. Yeah, I've got good accuracy. Uh, I've then got some crit rate and kind of similar stats to Seer. So when she does a decreased defense ability, she will also lay a bit of a pile driver to get things warmed up. I've then got my main damage dealer as it stands, which is Gaelic. He should be at 85% crit rate and he's not there. So again, we might need to change this build. 
His build currently lacks defensive stats a lot. 23,000 health is too low. Um, accuracy, I don't care about on him. So really, I need to up his HP percent. At the minute, I've got him in an attack percent chest because he's my arena nuker. That does make a bit of sense, by the way. But the trouble I've got is when we start to push higher, he's going to start being targeted by all sorts of mobs and he cannot take the flak right now. So this is a bit of a dangerous dungeon build, but it's, it's about as good as I've got for an arena build as it stands. My armor goes in destroy set because of uh, me trying to fight the scarab boss. But the, best, uh, the main stats about him do make some sense. So he's got some accuracy in there. He's got 100% crit rate, which he has to have. And he's got some speed. So those three stats are the most important stats. The rest of it is kind of filler. But um, I do worry, again, for this dude, that he's just going to die when we get to sort of mid-game dungeons. And he's quite an important part in a, a couple of the dungeons. Yeah, so Scarab Boss is not in this rotation anyway. So I can sw uh, slip him out of the Destroy set for now and give him a better overall build around defensive stats. And then he's going to help me with stuff like Spider, Finite, even maybe Ice Golem as well. So three big dungeons that I want to push in, he's going to be a big part of them. Venom Age is also like a clutch pull for this account. Got her six star as soon as I could. Uh, I do need more accuracy in her build. Other than that, I could do her being a bit quicker, but you know, all I really wanted was some defensive stats and some accuracy. She can hit pretty hard actually, but I just don't have the gear to do all of the things. So I need her to be a bit of a jack of all trades. I will try and speed her up with some gear enhancements and get her more accuracy. If I six star her uh, in Ascension, then I could maybe, let's just see if I've got an accuracy banner. This is why, uh, no I don't. This is why it's important to get those mid game dungeons done because I need her an accuracy banner, which means I need to farm some spider for her. I've then got Caden, life still set, bit slow, bit low in accuracy. He's kind of in a, a nothing build really. I was going to use him for clan boss. I don't need to anymore, which means I can ditch his life still gear and just bring him into a, more of a rounded build. So that's going to be helpful. Um, Mermadon is in regen set. He's actually pretty damn clutch for buffs for Seer if I need that. Apoth is just kind of like speed freak. He's going to be in a lot of my teams um, and he has got some defensive stats. I'm trying to push HP and defense on his items. You see I've got flat HP, flat defense. It's not ideal, but these are fast pieces, which means that they kind of have to stay on. So therefore, I just have to do the best with what I've got right now. Another reason why I need to get into these dungeons is to improve this dude's gear. Um, Master Butcher is kind of like my shield set champion. He's mainly a Doom Tower champ, but could come in if I need shield sets. Uh, and then I've just leveled Bellowa to 46, basically 50. Quite fast in a stun set. Fast stun set. I could do with more defensive stats. At level 50, it's hard to keep people alive. So... Now, if I've got a defense-based uh, amulet here, that would do. You're probably like, don't you want more damage on him? That's not what I built him for at the moment. If I get him to six star, I would build him to do some damage. But a five star, he is control. He is all about doing control abilities for me. And stun set is the control for now. Rotate through as many times as I can. Him just doing a, a, an AOE ability, I'll stun enemies and it will give me more chance to get my, my stuff away so I can level that one out uh, and then I've got Apoth uh, sorry not Apoth, Hikatuna as another quick champion um, basically built similar to how we've got Apoth at the moment I could do with more accuracy in her build so that her kind of speed decrease stuff starts to kick in so that's my selection of champs uh, I'm going to do a bit of re-gearing now and then we'll start running through some dungeons. Okay then, we've made a few changes so I've brought the speed of the apothecary down a couple but we've got better overall defensive stats only by a bit we're still a little bit weak my bellow i just leveled up this banner uh this amulet sorry to 12 so we've got a, a few more stats coming through that uh we have changed up seer to have a bit more crit and um a little bit less speed and i've kind of i kept armina the same kept scaly the same armor girl completely taken out of that um the destroy set and basically given accuracy alongside the other stats with a couple of percent short on the crit rates which is annoying but otherwise this builds much better venom age now i've given a bit more accuracy still short 
much better on speed and stuff like that. So she'll rotate through better. Caden are taking the life steal gear off. And we've now got um, accuracy to do his job and steal some speed and stats alongside it. So I kind of feel like we're in a good spot to get trying. Just go through the first couple of dungeons here and uh, see what we can do. It's worth saying, like, if I wasn't doing this video, all of my energy right now is going into masteries for Venom Age. Like, all of my energy would be here. Um, but obviously, the video, we're trying to show people how to get some stuff done. So, into the mid game then for Ice Golem. What are we looking for here? We are looking for decrease attack. Specifically for the boss, decrease attack is the best ability in the game. We don't mind having a bit of block revive on those side ads. Because once you block revive them, they won't pop up. The, the main thing with Ice Golem is when both ads are up, the, the main boss is hitting for, um, he's basically ignoring 100% of your defense. If one ad is up, it's 50% of your defense. And if no ads are up, he's just hitting normally. So the ads are super important. Putting decrease attack on the main boss significantly, significantly reduces the chance of you being one shot. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. So what am I looking at here? This is my main team that I've been running for 13, um, which is basically damage for waves, chance to block revive on the adds, decrease defense for waves and for the main boss. And then decrease attack is coming from this little cheeky um, mama here, Venom Age. So this is the kind of team I'd run. The only thing that I would potentially sub out here if it's not working well is I could sub Bellowa into the mix and Bellowa could give me that stunnage, but also an AoE chance to decrease attack. Even the small version is actually pretty helpful. But because um, Venom Age is single target decrease attack, which means that I can't guarantee she's going to be putting it on the boss. But you see the flow here. Speed into drop defense into damage. Yeah, that's the flow of my team. I do that on purpose. That's not a lucky coincidence. That is done on purpose because I need to get... Drop defense out before we start to lay our damage. I don't have a reviver in this setup. You see Armager is taking the flak. That's because his HP is lower than the others. But he's got quite a good defense pool now. So he can actually take a hit. It's by design that he has got the lowest HP in this type of team. Because he can take a hit and then my apothecary can just heal him back up. You notice the difference. We don't one shot a wave when our decreased defense is not out there. Increased defense is on instead. But we're fine. We're coming on to the boss with full health. Poison is really good against Ice Golem. So Venom Age kind of comes in as both a chance to be my decreased attack. But she does put it on the side adds as a kind of standard. And also Poison on the boss. The reason why Poison's so good here is because it actually doesn't trigger his Retribution hit. Which is probably the worst or hardest part of this fight to deal with. Turn meter control is relevant here. Decreased speed is relevant. But even if he doesn't get his turn, you see he still does that swipe because um, he triggers it on intervals of health. I think it's every 25% of his health, he triggers another one. So what you don't want to do is kind of kill him too quick. If you kill him too, too quick and trigger two of those hits together, you're probably dead unless you've block revived one of these ads. Now, because I'm running auto here, I want comps that will run auto, not fully manual i really want to get lucky on an armor to hit killing one of these side ads and block reviving i can't control if that's gonna happen or not so i'm kind of like trying my luck he's gone down though unfortunately and this is looking tough i don't have tons of healing and i don't have a revive i think i just about still do this but you can see, and poisons are important here. I'm going to lose Armina as well. Both side adds up is a dodgy one. Oh, it's going to be close, actually. It's actually going to be close. I really need the decrease attack to go on the boss. So the only way you can kind of get around that, and obviously life still gear on this dude is doing work. The only way you can get round uh, whether or not the decrease attack is going to go on the boss is actually by just clicking the boss. The trouble is, obviously, that's not going to be something you can just do on, alt, uh, on auto all the time. A beautiful five uh, shards here. Lovely. Thank you for that raid. So that was stage 14, and you saw it was tight. That's probably not 100% team. And also, it's actually not a bad affinity for me as well. And what, what you want to try and aim to do 
in any dungeon. So I, I've kind of got different stages that I try and get to. The first thing I want to do is be able to clear stage 10. Because it gives me 4 or 5 star gear. It gets rid of all this 3 star crap you're never going to use. The next thing you want to do is be able to clear 13 successfully on auto. Because you get 4 to 6 star gear. You start getting the 6 star drops. From then on, it's really about just progressing. Because you start wiping out more and more of the 4 star gear the higher you get. Until you can hit 20 where it's 5 to 6 star gear. And then really that's where you're gearing up. But... For now, on something like Ice Golem that I won't run a lot, honestly, stage 13 for me is kind of just fine. Like I ran all of the Gaius event on 13, and I was pretty happy with that. Or what you do is you manual your way through a hard wave, like stage 15, and try and get an auto going on something like 16, where the affinities are not an issue to you. But for Ice Golem, we're going to leave it where we are, and uh, let's press on. So Dragon. Dragon's a big one for any account. Same type of zones you see here, stage 10, 4 to 5 gear, stage 13, 4 to 6. But for Dragon, you want to get yourself up to stage 19, 20 as soon as you can. I'm already on 16 on auto, but this one we bring Seer into the mix. She's just a damage dealer here. Otherwise, same squad. Venomage is my poison. Poison is super important on Dragon. You can't turn me to control a Dragon. So you, you basically got to do your damage along the way. The same sort of thing, really. You see it run through. We get our abilities away. It's one thing I do need to set up my team makeup because Armina doesn't know what she wants to do. Sometimes she's like that. Yeah, I'm a decreased defense champion. Then she's like, no, hold on a minute. I want to be a turn meter control champion. It kind of doesn't make up her mind. And that's annoying, <laughs> honestly. Be a decreased defense champion, Armina. It's what you're better at. Stop kind of mixing it around. Because the annoying thing with her doing it in the wrong order now is that it takes me longer and longer to get back to the abilities that I want. We do get a stun off though, which is helpful. We definitely could run that kind of stun bellower in these teams as well to give us more chance of stuns. If I'm taking too much damage, see we've got a knock there, he's down. Like too many hits are coming through, mainly because Armina honestly was doing her abilities the wrong way around. But because of that, I, I could just bring Bellower in here and give me more chances of stuns. So that's a really good option if you're struggling to get through dungeons at a later level, just bring in another control champion if, you, if you've already got Scylla the drakes then you know she's a great control champion and it might be that even seer who's just in here for damage would be almost like the first out seer or gaelic honestly one of the two would come out and they'd be replaced with someone who's doing a bit more control as we get a bit higher up so once i've got to dragon here as long as i've got my, you know a couple of people in stunts uh, sorry in um life steal gear and we've got some poison ticking in then we should be good. You'll see a lot of our damage also comes from Warmaster procs when you get to these later game dungeons. But these poisons kicking in from Venomage are going to be really helpful. That's one of the best ways to do damage against a dragon. The decrease attack is also really helpful if you can get it to land because all of the damage that the dragon is doing to you is attack based. And at this stage, we're just kind of making sure or hoping that we can keep our health up. The Seer does a good amount of life regen with her war master procs if she's in life still set so only one poison landed there it's a bit annoying that's why you know accuracy is really important in terms of me improving the venom ages build that's the one kind of weakness i've got at the moment in the venom age did get the decrease attack away though that's going to be really good when we get this big scorch hit come in which is coming in any time now so that potentially would have at least got me low if i didn't have decrease attack out there and that's going to be another level cleared. And there's, there's so many options in terms of how you can run this team. Like, there's nobody in this team right now who's a must-have. Everybody doing their job in terms of speed, in terms of decreased defense, in terms of the AoE damage, a poisoner. It could be anybody in the game. In fact, Kale is really good at doing these jobs straight off the bat as a, a kind of, you know, starter champion. But... There's no kind of must-haves for Dragon. It's literally just a case of use the champions you've got uh, that are, are kind of geared up. That's a three-minute run. Not too bad. And that's a stage 17 clear, full auto. And that will be a really consistent team. Okay, peace. Uh, Gaelic was a kind of a bit of a letdown in terms of the way he dropped. And also, I was, I've been saying about it through the, through the run. Just make sure you do your team setups just to make sure that the champions that you want to use 
actually do the skills you want them to do in the right order. And the main one I want to say here is always use your drop defense as your first choice, Armina. It is what you are all about. So when we get to something like uh, Firenight, it's very different. So again, you need a team that's going to um, that's going to be able to deal with the content. So what do we need here? Turn meter control is really important on Firenight. We need uh, ideally a decreased speed ability on the actual boss. We need multi hits to get through the the shield. So again, I would say farm at ten until you can do thirteen. Same same idea, same principle. Um, but this is much harder to break into. I got a couple of multi hits here in Gaelic. Multi hit here. Seer doesn't give me any multis, so she's out. Arbiga comes in as a turn meter controller. Honestly, Hiker Toon could be really good here for more speed and a bit of turn meter control. I think maybe we do this. Venomage is actually good here as well because she brings the heal reduction. I can't afford to, so maybe we do it like this. We lose the Apoth, but Apoth's got the triple hit A1. It's tough actually. Maybe we try this first. The heal reduction would be very nice for us. Maybe we do this. So I kind of lost my damage for the waves, but the heal reduction is really strong. The decreased speed from High Katoon on our A1 is really strong. But you've almost got two teams. You've got a team that needs to be able to beat up waves, and then you've got a team that needs to be able to um, kill the boss. And they're two very different things that you need. So I'm hoping that... The AoEs are enough between Armina and uh, Venomage, which feels like we're probably just about enough. But you see, even though I've got a bunch of 60s, I'm picking a, a couple of 50s in favor of them because it just it fits this fight better. And that's kind of you know where I'm I'm always harping on about team comps. This is what I mean. So Armaga can just drop turn meter of any of these guys and gives us a lot of damage. Even though I've already got increased speed up, running a second one is still useful. Got a little bit of time to get back to her main ability. Same here. To try and kill someone off is the main thing. Like if you see a lot of people about to take their turn, just try and stem the numbers a bit. Get the drop defense out. Should kill the one on the end. And kind of like half kill the rest i'm not going to use any of my main abilities now i don't think i die if i do damn um probably even a bit lower health than i wanted to be honestly but we can just heal her up and then we get onto the boss with kind of full complement so if we get to the boss here we need to break the shield down as quick as we can and once we've broken the shield we then need to get the important debuffs away there's no point running your debuffs before that you know other uh, we've got here double hitter yeah other people with better uh decreased defenses with other stuff would be better here like my arm uh, my armina is a good champion but she doesn't really bring a lot for finite other than the drop defense so we're going to break through the shield get the um heal reduction in that's really important try and get a turn meter control going with armiga we've got first hit there so I either try and decrease speed A1 or I get a turn meter drop. It's only a small chance. I'm going to try and land the decrease speed. Didn't land it. And then you notice instead of him healing up because we've got the heal reduction on, we've actually, um, yeah, we just stopped him getting that instant heal, which is important. Get our speed running again. Double hitters. You're like rinse and repeat, really. And we will get through this. It's, it's definitely harder to get full auto teams going on this boss. Getting some damage abilities away. I think we're going to pump speed and turn meter here. Should have healed, actually. Turn meter control from Armager. Good. That's what he's in there for, really. Pump speed again. Try and get a decrease speed on. Again, didn't land it. I should have healed here earlier. She's going to die. Oh, she's not quite dead. Lucky. And rinse and repeat. So you can kind of see 
you know, that's this is why someone like Coldheart's so good because she's got the four hitter A1 and she's got turn meter and she's got heal reduction. She brings three things to this fight which are all like essential for this boss. So I could probably just go full auto from here and get the job done. Armagut on auto will always do his turn meter control if uh, the turn meter's over a third. If it's under a third, then he'll do his whack. But again, you can kind of see the type of comp. So like I say, you need a team that can deal with waves and then almost a separate team that deals with the boss. So you need to try and kind of claw together those different concepts with the champions that you've got. That's stage 12 done. Ideally, I would want to be able to farm an auto stage 13 to make it worthwhile coming here. Finite is not an area that I will farm a lot until I've got more 60s and more variation in teams. Now, Dragon is, is kind of my next on my radar and Spider is the other one on my radar. Finite is important, but it's more like late game gear. So up until stage around here, really, around stage 13, maybe all the way up to 15, you're looking to do damage through aoe's so you're looking to hit the spiderlings and kill them one shot them um and then you're also looking to turn me to control the main spider you'll hear a lot of talk about hp burn teams and that type of stuff hp burn teams are for later game at this stage hp burn will do too much damage to the spiderlings and you need to burn the spiderlings for an hp burn strat to work so actually up until about stage 15 you want to be doing AOE hard hitting hits with one or two champions in there that just control speed and turn meter. When you get past say stage 17, HP burn becomes way more important. And actually, you can't really one shot the spiderlings anymore. So you need to bring in spiderling control in terms of like stuns or freezes or sleeps or whatever. You need to be able to stop the spiderlings hitting you. And you also need to decide who your spiderling tank will be and make sure that that person is able to deal with taking a lot of damage. Probably means you also need to be able to heal the person that's taking the damage or clean off the poisons, etc. So the fight changes as you go on. Okay, then I'll show you the last one, Spider. I don't think my team, until I get a couple more 60s and a, a bit more gear going, I don't think I need to farm higher than this, stage 13. And I'm, I'm also not sure that I can. Potentially, this is just better. High Cartoon in instead of Apoth because High Cartoon does a decreased speed A1, decreased turn meter A3, as well as the speed up. But she's not geared very well. And she doesn't have enough accuracy to do those two moves that I've just spoken about yet. Um, turn meter speed up for us. Turn meter control against the enemy. A bit of healing for whoever's going to be tanking spider damage. We've got AoE damage here, here, and here, which is really important against this boss um certainly in the earlier stages as i've said and i think that's probably about all i need it's worth saying that you kind of decide who the spiderling tank will be if spiderlings are hitting you they're hitting your champion with the lowest hp so if affinity is not the issue they look like we're avoid affinity like this they're looking for the lowest hp champion that you've got and that's the one they're targeting just bear that in mind in terms of like, you know, if you're trying to make sure that somebody's not going to be targeted, you need to kick their HP up above the person that you do want to be targeted. Also worth saying that you can't stop the heal from the main spider. It's not possible. What you can do is reduce the amount of the heal based on the amount of spiderlings that are alive at any time. So the more spiderlings that are alive, the more this boss heals for. Um, you can't can't put like a heal reduction on and just reduce the healing. It doesn't work. So just bear that in mind. Like a big smack now. If the spiderling had its turn there, when all of those, uh, if the main spider had its turn there, when all of the main spiders were dead, then it would heal for basically nothing. Whereas now, more and more spiderlings dropping in, the heal will now be bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and there's not a lot I can do about it. It's now like full complement. So unless this blows loads up, it's a big heal. Also, the more spiderlings the spider consumes when it does that ability, the uh, more damage the spiderling, uh, the main spider gains. So again, there's definitely a thing for spiderling control just before the spider gets its turn to reduce the, the damage that she's doing. 
Other things you can do as you get further through Spider is you know, put resistance on your Spiderling tank so that it's not taking the poison damage as well as the kind of the hit damage. She's now hitting pretty damn hard. I kind of need to kill it in this next turn before she gets another turn because I've already lost one tank. I can't really afford to lose any more champions at this point. But we are still doing good damage. I think we've probably got this. Just about. The Warmaster procs again. Warmaster procs do more against Spider than probably any other of the main dungeon bosses. Because the Spider's just got a very high base HP. Also means that enemy max HP champions like Cold Hearts and Septimuses and Armagers actually do bigger hits against this boss than any other boss. And this is what you're looking for. You're looking for your banners, your amulets. But it's only worth farming here once you've got 60s that are ascended that can actually wear this stuff. So bear that in mind. Um, but I would say stage 13 is a good kind of mid-game dungeon area to get to for Spider to start to collect some of those goodies. So look, there you go. Free-to-play account. Moving through the mid-game dungeons. Hopefully that's helped you with some ideas around how to deal with them. And... Um, yeah, and I'll just get myself farming some gear and some masteries now in my Venomage. I've been Hell Hades, free to play. I will see you later. <laughs>